I think isolation by yourself, but when you separate yourself, what you're really doing is you're separating yourself from any distractions, anything that is not giving you an ROI. You know, all the pros do it. And when I say all the pros do it, you know, every single time I get on the call with people, everybody always tells me, John, look, I want to make pro money. I want to be that professional. Okay. But I don't want to put in that pro type of grind. It's, it's not going to happen. And in certain seasons, guys, just as, as an entrepreneur, you're going to have to put an incredible amount of focus into what you are doing and how you're going to be able to multiply that. And, and, and that comes with eliminating, that comes with getting rid of all the distractions. You know, I heard this quote from a big billionaire. He said that the billionaire advantage is, it, is time management. And a lot of times people think time management is organizing their time, organizing their time in different ways, structuring it, you know, organizing what time you're doing this, what time you're doing that. But this billionaire, it's called the billionaire advantage. He said, time management isn't organizing your time. Time management is going out there and eliminating the bull crap, right? Eliminating the bull crap that's taking up your time, right? that is taking up your time. Amateurs try to manage their doing, manage what they're professionals, okay? They eliminate the things that aren't giving them a positive ROI. And I think in November, what? while everybody else is slowing down, while everybody is hanging out, while everybody's slowed down in the fourth quarter, I can remember the last half a decade that I've spent going all in November and I will continue to go all into November because you know what? I understand that this is where everybody else slows down. Well, guess what? This is where I'm going to speed up, right? And in, the, and in five years from now, in a decade from now, people are gonna say, hey, look, this kid got lucky or hey, Aaron got lucky. Hey, uh, you know, Ashley got lucky. Elijah got lucky, but guess what? They're gonna be, un they're not gonna understand all the time, energy, and effort while everybody was slowing down. We put in in November, we put in in December, right? So the fourth quarter is normally when you want to go the hardest. When most people slow down, that's when you want to what? Observe the masters, do the opposite, and go even harder in your entire business. You want to be a better student. You want to be a better, uh, a better student. You want to go harder in your business. You want to get out of your comfort zone. And that's where you really roll back down and say, hey, look, I'm going to double down on my goals and what it is that I want, right? Go harder on the off seasons, okay? If you think of sports, let's go back to like, let's say basketball, baseball, if you look at any of these entire sports, understand that no season is one during the season. It's always one on the off season. You think Michael Jordan or LeBron, okay, won their championship games? At their championship games? Absolutely not. It was one in practice. It was one with the day by day, okay, trial and error, thousand shots that Jordan would take, 10,000 shots every day, right? That's when it's won. That's when it's won. It, success is won in the silent process that is just consistent over time. It isn't, it, it isn't won in this loud, you know, championship rah-rah speech. Okay, it's won the more, every single day, okay, over that slow process. So let's talk about the season of separation. I think that um, I'm gonna give you guys four pillars of success that I think that um, will really help you in, in life, in business, and in, in any of this that I think can really elevate you in your entire life and your business. And I'm gonna give you three things that I recommend for you to do in the season of separation. So the first four pillars of success and you can look at this in trading. You can look at this in, um, you know, network marketing. You can look at this with your social media. You know, now we're at a travel club, you know, with your travel, let's say real estate or whatever it is that you're looking at. I'm gonna give you guys four pillars. So the first pillar I would recommend every single one of you guys is to gain the skills, okay? Gain the skills, practice the skills, master the skills, have awareness of the skills. What skills do you need to win? You know, in network marketing, prospecting. 
promoting, presenting, and promoting. It's easy. It's simple. And I felt an anxious about it, so I'm trying to find on Instagram. Oh, I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you. I, I'll show it to you. You'll know exactly who I'm talking about when I when I show it to you. But um, yeah. So anyway, I'll show it to you. But back to the episode. What are the skills? Let's say for trading, technical analysis, market of different types of charts. It's a skill. Understanding the markets, reading patterns. That's a skill, right? What are the how tos? What are the specific skills that you need to win? Okay. Look, you're trying to go to P600. Okay, what skills do you need? Maybe how to leverage a three-way call. Maybe you need the skill of taking action, right? So number one, skills. Number two, work ethic. You need an incredible amount of work ethic. Okay, and work ethic isn't something that can be taught. Thank God, you know, uh, I thank God every day. I was raised by two uh, Latin American parents that... Uh, the way they raised me was all like tough love. I'm not gonna lie to you. There was no like lovey dovey, like love in my household. It was a lot of tough love. My mom would come in and just be like, yo, lazy bastard, what are you up to? This is my mom, right? This is my mother. And I used to be like, yo, what are you talking about? She's like, yeah, the dishes aren't done. This isn't done, this isn't done. She's like, you're living here with a roof over your head, rent free. Before I kick you out, you better go fix this. You better go do this. You know, when I was when I was 12, my 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 mom already put me to work. She forced us to go outside and we would do hard work, construction and carpentry. So my dad was a carpenter and a landscaper. So he would do carpentry, construction and landscaper. He was everything. Dude. You know how Latin American parents are. He was everything. He would do carpentry, construction. He would do landscaping. He was a chef. He was, he was, he was a jack of all trades. He was hilarious. And there was this one time, man, I'll never forget it. My mom, she used to always be like, I used to tell my mom, I'm tired. Like, you know, we'd be working for seven hours straight. She'd be like, you're tired? She's like, she would just call me really bad words in Spanish and be like, yo, what are you, like a, like a girl? Like, what's good with you? Like, come on, man, like you're a man. Like, get up and work. And I was just blown away because I was like, wow, dude, I'm 12, man. Like, give me a break. I want to go play with my friends. And the funniest part was it really kind of taught me something because it taught me the value of a dollar. And my dad, he used to say something to me all the time when I used to ask him for money. He used to be like, John, look. He's like, John, look, check it out. He's like, you want some money? You want 100 bucks, 200 bucks? He's like, you're crazy. He's like, all right, you know what, John? He's like, look, go into my garage. There's a lawnmower, okay? And go knock on some doors and go mow a lawn and don't ask him for any fucking money. And then we'd go inside. And anytime I wanted to go get money, I realized I'm like, wow, bro, I have to like get on my feet. I have to do something. I had to think about different ways to go out there and make money. Why am I talking about this? Why, why is this even relevant? Because when you guys are here in, in this business, I think everybody has different levels of work ethic. And a lot of times what your level of going all in might be different than the person right next to you is. I want you to match Neno's work ethic. I want you to match Matt's work ethic. I want you to look at your favorite chairman and I want you to really kind of think of that person and what their standard is and try to live up to that standard. You know, I used to think I used to be a hard worker until I met, I met my first ever mentor named Daniel. And Daniel, me and him would do a tour together. Uh, we did our first tour together and bro, Daniel, at the time I was making 20 grand a month and was working harder than I was. And I'm like, dude, how is it that a guy, I was making four grand a month at the time, how is it that the guy that's making 20 grand a month is working harder than the guy making four grand a month? I'm like, I just don't understand it. And I remember when I hit chairman 25 or chairman, uh, chairman, yeah, chairman 25, like years ago. And I went over to Jason's house and Jason, I think had just hit chairman 750. And I remember, no, Chairman 500, and I remember being at Jason's place, staying there for like a week, just watching him work, bro. And Jason would work from, would be up at 6 a.m. doing an Australia call, finishing calls at 12 a.m. with corporate. And I was just blown away. And I thought, I, I felt almost embarrassed. I'm like, oh my God, bro, like, let me pick up the phone. Let me actually do something. I want you to focus on, I think one of the biggest pillars of success is your work ethic and check this out. 
if you're on the call today, I want you to put yourself in an environment of people that have an incredible amount of work ethic. If you can't push yourself, get around people that push yourself. Get around Nana, get around right people that have an incredible strong work ethic. And I think that is one of the biggest pillars. The, the third pillar I would give you guys is leadership. And leadership, super simple. It's not telling people what to do. Leadership is just serving, okay, serving people. How can you serve people? You can serve people with your time. That's one way. You can serve people with value. Okay, that's a third way. Or you could serve people with, I, I say, time, value, and, um, you know, results. So help them get to point A to point B, right? So skills, work ethic, and leadership. Okay, these are the four pillars. The last pillar I'm going to give you guys is awareness for this season of separation. What kind of awareness do you have? Do you know where you are right now? You know, when I... when. Awareness, I feel like goes hand in hand with like a lot of accountability. You know, are you right now accountable? Are you able to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, hey, look, maybe I need to fix my own shit. You know, <laughs> I don't want to say it like that, but I'm going to just keep it real. I'm going to be your big bro on the call. Like maybe you need to fix your own stuff, man. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people do not know what they do not know that they do not know. They do not know that they're doing something. And they do not know that they are doing that something that's holding them back. Try to build awareness, try to audit your thinking, audit your belief system, audit your habits, audit the way you speak to people, audit, you know, a lot of awareness is auditing, you know, seeing what's helping you, seeing what's not helping you, seeing what's serving you, what systems, what beliefs are serving you, what people are and not serving you. You know, a lot of awareness is, I would say the fourth pillar and the fourth pillar really boils back down into the final thing I'll talk to y'all about. And uh, that is really going out there and having the awareness to, to see what life is kind of teaching you right now. Maybe life is putting you in situations that you need to be a little bit more confident, which is why you need to pick up the phone, which is why you need to throw that event. Maybe life is teaching you to be a little bit more disciplined, which is why you're blowing accounts. Which is why, okay, you're, you're over leveraging. Maybe life is trying to teach you, okay, to be a little bit more organized. Maybe that's why people are leaving your team, which is why people won't listen to you, won't follow you because you're not organized. Okay, you're not, and, and if you're not organized, if you're not structured and you don't have a system for somebody to go to, maybe the, the, they're gonna be, they're gonna freak out. They're gonna be like, wait, this person's not structured. I, I'm going to go with someone else. Maybe someone else is a little bit more structured, you know? So I would recommend you guys to think of these four pillars of success in this season of separation. I think it could really help elevate um, and push you guys really to that entire next level. And the last thing I'll tell you guys on here, just because, you know, in a season of separation, um, a lot of times what you'll notice is a lack of uh, uh, people, their belief systems tends to drop. And, uh, you know, I feel like a lot of times people are waiting for either Neno to save you. You're waiting for, let's say, Jeremiah or Alex to save you. You're waiting for me to save you. The reality is, it's like, don't wait for anybody's success but your own. Stop waiting for another success story to inspire you to keep going forward. Stop waiting for to see somebody else really become that big trader to inspire. Become that success story, right? Because raise your belief level and have certain types of self-respect. You know, right now, I want you to understand that your entire life is a direct reflection of exactly what you believe that you deserve. So I always say like, right, like life is an expression of your belief level. So the problem with the world is that the world is fit. A lot of people's beliefs in the world are very limited and they don't think in this limitless mentality right? They have this limited income. They have, li they have, uh, they hang around limited people. Okay. They have limited habits. And guess what? Because of all those different things, everything else in their life is limited. They don't have this limitless type of mentality, right? I always say that it's every single person's born birthright to be wealthy, to be rich. You know, Bob Proger has a book out there. It's called the science. No, no, you were born rich. He talks about how the chances of you being alive today was like one in 400 trillion. You are the wealthiest thing 
in human existence because you have so much power, but society has manipulated you to believe that you deserve poverty. Okay, it's insane. So if you understand this, and my advice to you is to respect yourself at the end of this season. Have full-blown respect for you. Don't tolerate failure. Don't tolerate the failure of other people, okay? Don't tolerate, okay, the belief systems of other people. Don't tell other people to tell you what to think, how to believe, or what's going on right now, or what's not, what isn't going on, or what is going on in your business. You gotta just be able to have some sort of self-respect to have a set goal for the end of the year and follow through in that entire goal. Because there are so many times where people convince themselves that settling for something less or settling for a mediocre lifestyle is good enough. And I always say, why limit yourself? Because a lot of times people lack self-respect for them. They'll try to convince me why living on less than 30 grand a year is better than making 30 grand a month. But it really boils back down to their self-respect. So in this final season, follow through on your goals, follow through on what you're looking for, and honestly, follow through on that promise, on that purpose, on that mission that you're going after. Have that self-respect, because I can guarantee you, everything that you do follow through on by the end of this quarter will be a reflection in your life eventually. So I appreciate every single one of you guys for hopping on this entire call. I'm grateful for y'all. Love y'all. I'm going to pass it back to Neno for him to take it away, guys. I cannot wait to see y'all, right? Really run it up and grow into really, okay, that next wave in this entire organization, that next wave in this entire company. And, you know, if you're on the call, especially on Halloween, it means you're serious. You know, most people here are like, yo, most people on Halloween are like turning up. Okay, having fun at the club, partying right now. But if you're here, you're really serious about the entire business. So I guarantee you the next chairman that is going to be popping in the company is probably on this call right now. So go out there and get yours. Appreciate it, Neno. Take it away, bro. I'm grateful for y'all. I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She They say don't use slime for these pat don't use these slime patches. But they do have must be for the type of bike it is. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that too. This type of bike that you're doing, you're like going faster, which is also you're risking friction. Puncture. Easier. So the traction you're taking. So it was like if you use if you buy these patches, you should be straight. I was like, okay. more insight of information and knowledge and resources, the people that you begin to attract around you begin to change because you're speaking at a language uh, that they can interpret and understand and articulate. So I'm telling you guys.